I'm joined now by Dr. Hartzell Schaff, who's the current president of the ATS. Yep, Congratulations, I Thank think. You. Or is it you're going to soon be past president? Is that, yeah. that's, the, that's better than being president. <laughs> Hartzell, thanks so much for joining us. Um, tell, tell us a little bit about the ATS. Um, you know, I mean, obviously, the colleagues that are watching this might know, but there might be some that don't. Sure. The American Association for Thoracic Surgery is an organization. Uh, of thoracic surgeons, it has a restricted membership, but it has a very large profile on the academic side in our specialty. Uh, not only with its uh, annual meeting, uh, in which we have abstracts and presentations of, of new uh, devices and techniques and so forth, but also in the, the uh, meetings that are co-sponsored every year, like the mitral uh, conclave. In addition to the mitral conclave, the, the AATS co-sponsors a, a a meeting on bowel disease with the ACC. We have an aortic symposium in New York on alternate years with the mitral conclave. We have two additional meetings in general thoracic surgery. And we also co-sponsor a meeting on critical care in thoracic surgery. So we have a large portfolio of, of uh, educational opportunities for thoracic surgeons. So it's, a, it's really an academic arm that does is very interested in, in postgraduate education. Postgraduate education. Right. Okay. <coughs> the, the, um, obviously, we're at the Mitral Conclave. You all are the co-sponsors of this meeting. What, how do you see the Conclave in the context of the, the mission you just outlined? Uh, we think it's been a home run. It's it's just been enormously successful, and I think it's a product of, of David's uh, energy and organization and working with the AATS and the PRI staff. It's been a it's been a great marriage. The first year that this meeting was held, year before last, they had over 700 attendees. This year, I understand there's eight or nine hundred. Right. Right. Um, and the meeting's been exported. Last year, there was a mitral conclave in Japan, in Nagano. So it's, it's been very successful and I think adds to the, to the uh, educational opportunities that thoracic surgeons have. Some people wonder, if you're, not a, if you're not a cardiac surgeon or a cardiologist, you wonder how people could be so focused on one little valve and how you can get 800 people every other year together to talk about it. But, I don't know. I, I've thought about it. Maybe you have no, too. No, I mean, I mean, I think you know it might be a model. I mean, you know, when you start thinking of so these general, I mean, because you do have you know, the world's collection of surgeons interested in mitral valve surgery. What better way to get you know an exchange of ideas? Well, I think it's it's great that way, but it's it's also good, Randy. It's also interesting because if you think about the mitral valve, it's not just one disease or one operation. There's a spectrum of diseases that affect the mitral valve. There's all of the advances that have been made in imaging, right, with echo right, right. and MR and so forth. So it's it's a single structure, but it affects so many other things in patients, and I think that's that makes it especially suitable for a, for a meeting like this. No, and no doubt, and you know, as, as you were saying this morning, and so you have to, you know, you, while we focus on the mitral valve, it's really the effect of abnormalities right. of that valve on the atrium, the fib, the ventricles, the right, right. side, pulmonary hypertension. So, it, and, it, and it's an area of, as we age, it's going to be of increasing yeah. importance. So, Absolutely. So, is this? Um, um, uh, will you all continue this sort of line of uh, point-specific courses, or do you think that you, you're running the, the aortic and the mitral on alternating years? Yes, and, and these two meetings bookend our, our uh, annual meeting, or at least they, right. they come just before the annual meeting, which is very helpful because often uh, um, uh, colleagues from overseas can combine two meetings right. with one trip, so that works yeah. out very well. Now, I, I don't know that we have an opportunity to do more than that in terms of putting a meeting after the, 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 the annual meeting, um, but we certainly look to uh, provide additional opportunities for our members in general and thoracic surgeons in general uh, as they come up. We have a, a, a growing uh, foreign group. We've co-sponsored meetings in uh, Malaysia, this last year in Turkey, in Japan, and already scheduled is a meeting in uh, Singapore and another meeting in Istanbul. Cool. Well, I mean, it, it's, it's um, you all are to be complimented because, I mean, this, you know, the first time I came was the first year they had it in 2011. I was blown away to see 
this number of surgeons, and they don't leave. I mean, they're, right. you, know, you can't get a cardiologist to sit down for more than five to five minutes. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. you know, so I mean, it's, it's it really is impressive to see it. Yeah, yeah, it really is. Thank you, and congratulations on not only the successful meeting here, but your success with the ATS. Yeah, Thanks very much, Thank Russell. You, Good to see you. Yeah.